Hello and welcome to this video about momentum. In your equation sheet that you get in your exam, you get this equation here to describe momentum, where you get P, which stands for momentum, equals M for mass, multiplied by velocity. And again, you don't get the units, but I'm going to show you a trick to, to help you remember the units for momentum. So if you can remember the units for mass and velocity, um, I'll show you how to work out the units for momentum. So mass is kilograms, velocity is meters per second, because velocity is very much like speed, so mass and velocity. And then to remember momentum, you just need to look at the equation. And you need to think to yourself, you've got a mass in kilograms multiplied by a velocity in meters per second. So my units for momentum must be kilograms meters per second. Because you're showing that you're multiplying a mass by a speed. So the units for momentum are kilograms meters per second. So if you forget them, you can work it out using that neat little trick. And that will work for most um, units, actually. So what is momentum? Momentum is the tendency of a moving object to keep moving. So it's a property that moving objects have. Because if you're moving, you'll have a mass and you'll have a velocity, which means you will have momentum. If you're stationary, however, an object has no momentum because a stationary object would have a velocity of zero, so if you multiply a mass by zero, you'll get um, a zero momentum. So it's something that only moving objects have. And I very much doubt that you'll be asked for the definition of momentum, but if you do, you could say it's a property of a moving object to keep moving, or the tendency of a moving object to keep moving. So momentum calculations then that start you off really easily because things get a little bit complicated after this. Simple momentum question then, calculate the momentum of a 5 kilogram bird flying at 5 metres per second. So here we've got our mass and here we've got our velocity. We multiply these together so we get momentum equals 5 times 5 which is 25 kilograms meters per second. Okay, if you're happy with inputting the numbers for those, like the other questions in physics, that's excellent. All you need to do is, as we always do, select what we've got in the question and then head to our data sheet to find that equation P equals M times V. Okay, this is where momentum starts to get a little bit um, more complicated. I want, to introduce the, I want to introduce you to the idea of conservation of momentum where momentum before an event is the same as the momentum after an event. And those events can be things like explosions or collisions. Sometimes they'll ask you for the definition of conservation of momentum, and you just need the idea that momentum before is the same as momentum after. And, and I'll provide a couple of examples so you can um, be a bit clear about what that means. So let's take an example of a couple of balls that you'd roll along the floor for example and at the moment they would be rolling along so they would have momentum okay so they'd be rolling over and they would go be going in this general direction and because they've got a mass and a velocity they have momentum because the object is moving now if they were then to collide together at a certain point You might then be asked to work out the momentum of these objects combined. And the conservation of momentum simply says that the momentum of uh, this ball needs to be added to the momentum of this ball, and that will give you the total momentum over here. So the momentum of the balls before, because this is everything that's happened before the collision, is equal to the momentum after the collision. That's this conservation of momentum idea. So for example, let's just say that this had this first ball had a momentum of 10 kilograms meters per second, 
and this second ball had a momentum of 5 kilograms meters per second. The momentum after is the same as the momentum before, so we combine these two. So the total momentum before is 15 kilogram meters per second, and therefore the total momentum afterwards is 15 kilograms meters per second. So it's really important we know the direction in which the balls are going. And in this system here, momentum is conserved, so the momentum of the balls before, so the combined momentum of the balls before, equals the momentum after. So this is for a collision, this kind of idea, two things coming together and colliding. So another example of collision, you might have um, two objects travelling in different directions, so you might have one object travelling in that direction, one object travelling in that direction, um, and then they may combine and collide in the middle and then travel off together. So in this case you will have to put a direction to your momentum, so that's really important. So I'm going to consider everything moving to the right as a plus direction and everything moving to the left as a negative direction. And let's assume then that this box has a momentum of 10 kilogram meters per second. And what we call it is we call it plus 10 kilograms meters per second. And let's assume this box has a momentum of minus 5 kilograms meters per second. Just because it's in the opposite direction, we give it it a minus, the opposite sign to we've given over here. And this is just completely random. I could have chosen to put the plus there and the minus there. Um, it doesn't matter which way round that you put it. But we're looking at the conservation of momentum and this is where these minuses come in to um, be really important. Because let's assume then that these objects then collide together and we need to work out the momentum after. So the momentum before would be the combined momentum of this box and this box. So this time the momentum before is plus 10 kilograms meters per second minus 5 kilograms meters per second. So the momentum before is plus 5 kilograms meters per second. So the momentum is heading in this direction, which gives you an indication that when those boxes collide, then they are going to end up colliding and still continuing in this direction over here, because the momentum before is plus 5 kilograms meters per second, and therefore, due to the conservation of momentum, the momentum afterwards is also five or plus five kilograms meters per second. In a final example we'll talk about an explosion. Okay so for an example of an explosion let's assume that we've got this box here and let's say that half of the box will explode in that direction and half of the box will explode in this direction. So in this kind of situation, we need to think about this conservation of momentum, and in an explosion, the momentum before is zero because the object is stationary. So if the momentum before is zero, the momentum after must also be zero. So let's put direction on our explosion to help us out. We'll assume this is the plus direction, and this is the minus direction. If we're talking about an explosion, let's assume that Part of this box here explodes in the right hand side direction with a momentum of 50 kilograms meters per second. Now because the momentum after has to be zero because of this conservation momentum that must mean that this part of the box here must have a momentum in the opposite direction, in the minus direction of 50 kilograms meters per second so that if we look at the momentum after we'd have minus 50 and then we add that to 
our 50 kilograms from the right and then we have would have a total momentum after of naught kilograms meters per second so a couple of things to highlight um, you have to have direction in these questions so if you've got moving objects they might well be both moving in the same direction or they might be moving in opposite directions if they're moving in the same direction just keep it easy and give them both a plus direction if they're moving in opposites you will need to assign one a minus and one a plus so I'm going to go through a worksheet example to help you get your heads around this a little bit better. The first example is for an explosion, and we're talking about um, this question here. A shot was fired from a gun. The 0.162 kilogram bullet left the gun at a speed of 860 meters per second. Calculate the speed at which the 10 gram, 10 kilogram, sorry, gun recoils. So we talk, we need to use our understanding of this up here, that momentum before equals momentum after. And we also need to use this equation to help us answer the question. So let's have a look at what information we've got. We've got a bullet and we've got a gun. And for the bullet, we know its mass. We'll just put these PMV in here. We know its mass is 0.162. We know its velocity is 860 meters per second. And for the gun, we know that its mass is 10 kilograms, but we don't have any other information. So once we've separated that information, we need to think about this idea. What's the momentum before this explosion? Well, if you remember with momentum of explosions, the momentum before is zero because you have a gun situated here and the bullet is inside and they're both stationary. So the momentum before equals zero and therefore the momentum after must be zero. So we need to give this situation, this event, a direction. I suggest you draw a little diagram in your exam paper to help you when you get these type of questions. So you've got a bullet leaving a gun in this direction and the gun recoiling in this direction. So I'm just going to suggest that this is the um, plus direction and this is the minus direction. So it doesn't matter which way around you put it, but you need to give your situation direction. So the first thing that we can calculate then is the momentum of the bullet here because we've got a mass and a velocity. So momentum equals mass times velocity so the momentum of the bullet equals 0 0.162 times 860, which gives the answer of 139.32 kilograms meters per second. So that's the momentum of the bullet. And because of this idea, the momentum before equals momentum after. So if the bullet has a momentum of plus 139.62, then the momentum of the gun must have a momentum of minus 139.62 because the total momentum after has got to be zero. So if it's plus 139.62 in that direction, it must be minus 139.62 in the other direction to get a total momentum after of zero kilograms meters per second. So we can transfer the momentum over to the gun. Now we know it's 1.139.32. And that leaves us to work out the velocity. And I'll just take us over here where we've got a little bit more room. So to calculate the velocity, we need to rearrange this equation to make V equals P divided by M. Okay, where velocity equals momentum divided by mass. So velocity to find the speed at which the gun recoils, remembering velocity and speed are very similar. So V equals the momentum, 139.32, divided by the mass, which is 10 kilograms. So velocity is 13.9 meters per second. So lots and lots of working out for these type of questions. They're often three or four mark questions. Um, they're rarely seen in the foundation paper. Um, but if you're higher tier, I suggest you get your head around these type of 
questions. I'm next going to go through a momentum question for a collision. So when we talked about momentum in the previous example, we had a momentum in that direction, which we call the plus direction, and a momentum in a minus direction. In this situation with a collision, we're talking about a momentum all in the same direction. And we're talking about Jack with a mass of 80 kilograms, a speed of 2.3 meters per second, traveling in this direction, and Jill with a mass of 60 kilograms and a speed of 1.7 meters per second, traveling in this direction. And then they both collide together and skate off together in this direction. And we are going to be asked a question about their momentum when they collide together. So Jack's traveling this way, so is Jill. When Jack catches up with Jill, they will collide and skate away together. And the question is, calculate the speed at which they skate off together. So to break it down first of all we need to think about the momentum of Jack so we can do P equals 80 times 2.3 so his momentum is 184 kilograms meters per second with Jill Again, P equals 60 times 1.7. So Jill's momentum is 102 meters per second. And then we need to think about the momentum that they would have when they collide and go off together. And to do that, we need to think about the momentum that's before the collision. And then we can work out the momentum afterwards. So if Jack has a momentum of plus... 184 in this direction and Jill has a, a, a momentum of plus 102 in this direction. We can combine the two to get the momentum before, so P before is the momentum of Jack plus the momentum of Jill. So the momentum before is 184 plus 102 which is 286 kilograms meters per second. So we remember that because the conservation of momentum, the momentum before equals the momentum after. So after the momentum is going to be 286 kilograms meters per second. But we need to be calculating the speed because that's what the questions asked us. So we need to think about what we need to calculate the speed. We need a momentum, and we've got that here, 286 kilogram meters per second. And we need a mass. But this time it's the combined mass of them both because they've joined up together. So the mass is 80 plus 60, which we've got from here, looking at Jill and Jack. So we've got combined mass of 140 kilograms. And we need to calculate their speed. Again, we need to rearrange this equation up here to make V equals P divided by M. And in that case, if we move this over here, we'd have V equals momentum, which is 286, divided by the mass, which is 140. And that would give us a speed of 2 meters per second. And that is the speed that they will skate off together with. So a couple of momentum questions there. Um, normally seen on the higher paper, three or four marks. You've got to remember that you've got a couple of examples to think about. You've got explosion where you've got um, one thing going in one direction and the other thing going in the other direction. Or you've got a collision when they're both going in the same direction. It could be that way or it could be that way. If you found this video on momentum useful for you, then please press the like button below and feel free to subscribe. Thanks for watching.